right first day in Kansas and uh, we got into camp this morning right before daylight got camp all set up everything taken care of there and uh, dropped John off and I am in and I am set and I am in the same place that I saw that rib cage that huge hundred and whatever hundred eighty ish deer last year come through here he walked right through here I was in that tree over there he walked right through here 25 yards from me right through here and uh and then unfortunately the next day the wind shifted on this whole thing and didn't work and today is the only day of this whole trip that the wind is right for this place so we are going to give it a try and uh see if we can't make something happen and uh, then we move on to greener pastures tomorrow but figured perfect for the first day um it is right now so that would be kansas time so it's 11 o'clock kansas time and uh we are set up, we are rolling, and uh, ready to sit out for the rest of the day and see what happens. All right, day two in Kansas. And uh, yesterday, we got set up at camp set up. I got out in the woods about 10.30, so um, basically half day yesterday. And I saw three does. I had one guy walk into there two hours before dark, walk in there, and uh, I, I whistled at him. I'm like, hey, and he saw me, he started waving his hands like nicely. He didn't even have a stand, a gun, a bow, nothing, and uh, he was trying to talk. I couldn't hear him, so I waved him over to me, and uh, apparently they're from Wisconsin, and he killed, uh, um, or his buddy in that same area I was, about 100 yards from me, killed a 170-inch uh, buck two days ago. And he was going to pull that stand down. They were getting ready to leave. So he pulled that stand and snuck out of there. Um, I didn't see, like I said, anything but three does. And uh, so I thought, okay, maybe that, maybe that pressure there and with the wind, that was my only time to hunt that area because of the way the wind is. I need a south wind. Wind was switching to north today. We got a cold front coming in right now. And uh, so I thought, all right, well, with all the pressure there, I'm going to move over to this other side, down two valleys and over. And uh, I had to come in here by boat to get here. It was easier rather than walking uh, 2,400 yards on Onyx. It was only a uh, it was a half mile paddle and then a, uh, a 400 yard hike. So not bad. I got up at 3 o'clock this morning to get in here. and uh, But I'm in here now and I'm between two bedding areas. We have a bedding area right up here huge bedding area this is just a cut okay we're on a huge hillside that just keeps going down 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 there we're on kind of this bench area and uh the river's 400 yards down there and uh, my boat's actually way down over that way 400 but like i said about 400 yards down to the river i was on the other side of that hill line you can see over there yesterday and uh but we got this big bedding area here this little bench area on the side right here i got fresh rubs you can see everywhere in here right here like that right there they're all over in here and uh i have this massive trail that comes right up through here goes that way breaks twice and goes up here breaks another time and goes up there i came in here in the dark i was originally going to set up in that tree there changed my mind went to that tree i didn't get in it yet but i looked at that tree and then i said no i'm going into this one um but then so we got that bedding area here huge this little cut in this hillside and then that's all bedding up there so i'm expecting deer to be on the downwind side it's coming along the edge of this bedding area cutting right through here or dropping off and coming up through here to come around and scent check this one as they work this hillside that's my anticipation that's what i'm, I'm hoping is going to happen um i don't know we got uh we got 30 mile an hour winds we just got a break in the wind that's why i'm able to record this right now i don't know how long i've been on stand it's cloudy um been on stand long enough to pee twice it is uh 7 30 in the morning and it gets daylight at 6 30 so we've been up here for about an hour and but I'm expecting these does, I, I, I believe when does are pressured by bucks and they're getting dogged and ran by bucks all the time, I think does take on an 
a buck-like bedding strategy. Now this is not proven except for to myself. I see it in Missouri, I see it in Kansas, and uh, first seen it in Ohio. And uh, I honestly believe that these bucks or these does will bed high, wind to back, thick to back so that the wind is there and they want to be high on the leeward side so that they can see everything and watch for any of those approaching bucks that are going to start dogging them or try and scent trap them and they can escape from that so that's I think bedding is up high during the run um, I do have a lot of thick stuff in that down here by the creek bottom but I'm not worried about it I think those bucks are going to run this high side checking for does that are bedded up here so we're going to give it a whirl uh, I'm staying in here all day, but I may not stay in this spot. Uh, I came in here and set up in the dark. I'd give it a 6 out of 10 or a 7 out of 10 as far as what I'm looking for. Um, I'll probably sit here till 1 o'clock. If I don't see what I like at 1 o'clock, I'm going to drop. I'm going to go another six or 800 yards down this hillside and uh, get on the, uh, between this bedding that's over here, right here, and another bedding that's further down. And... Uh, I'm going to try and set up right on, right on the downwind side of those and see what I can find. So that's the game plan for today. We'll see how it goes. All right, well, I relocated. It's uh, about 9.45, and I just wasn't feeling it there. And so I got down, and I came over to where I said I was. I'm actually about 700 yards from there. I worked this whole hillside here looking, and uh, I'm not impressed. I'm not impressed at all. It's uh, way more open than I anticipated. And uh, the bottom down there is not really as thick as I was hoping for. The only thing I got going for me here is I had a couple of scrapes right by those over here, right at the edge of these cedars here that were right in here. And I have a historic rub line with some new and a lot of old rubs that go through there. They come through and they run right here on the other side of this oak right there. You can see it right next to that oak. You can see one of the oak. God, this wind is unbearable. You can see one of the historic rubs right there. And it, there's probably 60 of them. I kind of followed that line right in through there and like I said there's about geez I am going to tip over and this tree is gonna literally take me out of it um, but there's like I said that historic road line is running right through here and that's the only thing I got going for me the winds gusting like I said 30 I mean 30 30 miles an hour the tree I'm in is not very big I'm gonna try and turn here without falling out grabbing onto here not very big offset bracket is fully extended you know this is a uh, I mean look at you can see the size of this not not very big and man this wind and I'm almost at the top of this dude and the wind is whipping like crazy what I'm gonna do here like I said I'm not feeling it um, the only good news is I am on the right side I am on the correct area I got a, uh, this is almost like a little bench right in here, and you can see it shoots straight up. And uh, that's private up there on the top. I can't go up there. I'm going to give this till about 11.30. And at 11.30, so it's about an hour and a half-ish. Look at this big beast. He's right there, right behind that old tree right there. Look at him. Look at that dude. He just came by. I didn't have shooting walker right through there. Okay, so I guess I was wrong in my assumption of my uh, skill set. I, uh, I was over in a tree. I can't see which one it is, but it's about 40 yards over there. And uh, right after I got done telling you guys that I was going to get down at noon, I had a doe and two bucks go right through here or a doe in a buck sorry a doe go and drop down there she was 25 yards from me a little out of range the buck went right there followed her he stood there making a rub and some stuff I, he passed through a shooting lane again 25 yards uh too far i don't want to shoot there and uh um they stood there and made a rub over there and those two went by and then here came two more bucks so the same thing come right through here and go right up here and they broke up there's a uh not broke up but broke up the hill there is a rub on that little tree right there that is fresh it was just made by a big 10 point and 
then a small eight point freshened up that rub right there and they worked their way oh, and they worked their way right on by again not giving me any shooting cut that same went that same way that those other ones did probably following that doe's trail dropped down then he came back up on that side and uh, when he was standing over there the little one was still here working this rub behind me the one that was with that doe came back up the hill he stood there facing me at like 15 yards finally with all this wind going around he kind of didn't know what to do he caught my wind he turned and he ran out that other one stayed there went up this way i was bleating at him and then hitting him with an asterisk bleat and a cry i couldn't get him to come over he walked back down i showed you video of both of those two you just seen and uh i'm putting them in right now so we moved again this is the third move so i was over there now i am here again in a super small tree for this but i'm pretty low i'm still three sticks up um, but I'm only probably about 15 feet, 14 feet. I couldn't go any higher. I wouldn't be able to shoot through here, but here's my world right here. They are running this little micro transition, this little micro funnel of cedars right through here. Like I said, they're freshening up that historic rub line. It goes through here with the fresh rub he just put there, fresh rub that they just put there, and then that fresh rub they just put there, but I just had three bucks rub this line and uh and a doe come through here already so we are going to stay the rest of the day but i did relocate because from where i am i cannot shoot them in these cedars they're too far away they're too far down there it's like i said 25 27 yards down and uh, i couldn't you know if they were on the north side or on the upside of that up here i could have did that but i can't when they're down there on the low side you can see a scrape right there too that's blown over but we got a scrape right there it's blown over and another scrape right here that again 30 mile an hour winds it's blown over right here and uh but I'm expecting them to come right down around these cedars. My wind should be going with thermal straight up there. And then this evening they're going to be dropping straight down there um, with the prevailing winds here too. But uh, I'm hoping I can shoot them before it gets to that or catch them right in here is the game plan. So we shall see. But we are, we are staying here. We are not running off. We're going to stay here and stick it out for the rest of the day. Then I'm going to bail out of here, but three shooter bucks, three great shooter bucks, and a doe. If only I was shooting a compound. You know, I was just sitting here thinking about it as I just got back up in this or got over here and set up. If I was shooting a compound, I'd be tagged out in every single state I hunted so far. Shooting a compound. Hold on, we're going to blow around here for a minute. If I was shooting a compound, I would have tagged out in Michigan tagged out in Missouri and I'd already be tagged out in Kansas and it's only a second day. Um, pretty crazy how, how what that works when you think about it. I'm not shooting a compound, I'm not going to a compound, but it is an interesting point and when I say tagged out I mean within 25 yard shots I would be tagged out completely with many opportunities beyond what I tagged out. A um, whole different ball game shooting a traditional bow. All right, we're going to stick it out here for another uh, five, six, seven hours, whatever we got, and see what happens. And there goes another one. It's a beautiful nine point right there. Came out of those cedars right over there and went up that edge. I tried calling and everything. I couldn't move them. Can't get them to, to respond to me. He's right there, dog. He's not going that far. Just can't get him to come over here. That makes five shooter bucks today. Five shooter bucks and two does in this spot, and I almost walked away from it. All right, well, we uh, just filled our buck tag in Kansas, and it was not on an absolute whopper. It was not a huge one, but I wasn't passing it up. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm so happy. I'm so excited. And uh, but just killed that buck. He came through just like expected. And um, this stand is, this tree is not very stable. The, the stand is, the tree is not. He came through right here by that big oak. Right there and came right up through here. Walked right up through here. Came right here. Turned and went right over here. And stood slightly quartered away with his head behind this tree right here. And... 
I drilled them. It's like, I don't know, seven yards, seven yard shot. And uh, arrow stuck in the off shoulder. And uh, so I didn't get an exit wound. It stuck in the opposite shoulder. Crack, it hit, and he just took off and bailed through there. And I think I heard him crash over there. So uh, we're gonna give it about 10 minutes. 15 minutes and uh, then I'm going to get packed up and go see if I can't find that dude. That's the game plan. All right, I'm standing right where I, he was when I shot him. Head behind this tree, standing right here. Isn't that little oak right there, that little second oak? You can actually see if you look at it. I took a piece of that oak branch that I could reach and break, broke it off and hung it on there. It's kind of like a little extra cover for anything coming this way. And I was right there. So, like I said, not very high. 15 feet up, 16 feet up. And a uh, simple 7, seven yard shot. Uh, 7, 8 yards, let me see here. Right here is a scuff mark where we took off from. Back feet. So, yeah, I'm going to call that probably... I'm going to call that uh, probably 8 yards, 9 yards. And uh, we're going to go find him. Well, that was actually pretty easy. I took about 15 steps. That tree is right over there. The tree is right there that I was in, you know, right along this edge. Here's a cedar he came out of. My tree is right there at uh, 20 yards, probably. And there we have a. Where are you at? Right there. We got a white belly. Game over. All right, there we go. Ah, that hurts. I bend that arm that way. You can see we are all loaded up here, and uh, that deer is completely boned out. And uh, I got the head laying here, which again, I'm not showing for YouTube purposes. They don't want to see that stuff. And uh, they give you fit. So, but I got the head there. I got the stand and my bowl. I'm going to carry my stand just draped over my shoulder. That beef stand is so light anyway uh, that there's no reason to even put it on my back. So I only got 750 yards to go. I just checked it on on X straight line. So to get to my boat, so it's not going to be too bad. And I'm going to throw that right up on my shoulder like this. And then in my hand is holding the camera. I'm going to carry that uh, antlers and the bow. And we're just going to trek right out of here. So I'll tell you more when we get there. Sure is pretty country out here. The size of those banks, how high this river actually gets and cuts into that. Well, they're 25 feet tall. But definitely pretty country. And we got a bunch of meat with us too. Makes it all perfect. Antlers in the front. Meat right there. Stand right behind me. All right, wind's blowing me away. We got to go. All right, just came back to camp real quick just to uh, skull plate that head out and get that kind of stuff done, which is all taken care of. Thought I'd show you real quick, camp. Davis wall tent. Love this tent. 12 by 14. Been using it for, I don't know, going on almost 10 years now. And uh, inside setup. My cot set up over here, and uh, over here we got John set up, a couple tables back there, all our gear. Uh, we do not need to bring the stove because it's not quite that cold here, so I, I have the stove in the trailer. We're not using it. This little 360 heater is gold. This is the most valuable heat source I have. Even when we run that wood stove, it takes 30 to 40 minutes for that thing to even get warm, and then you got to get up multiple times in the night um, You know, if you want to keep it going. This one here... I turn it on and it's hot in here within five minutes. It's warm. And this thing, we've never turned this above low. I mean, even on low, you turn it on, let it run for 10 minutes to get this place really hot. You turn it off. Uh, 20 minutes later, it starts to cool down. You turn it back on if you want to while we're up and doing things in here. We go to bed. We shut it off. Usually about two or three in the morning, you'll start to get that. You'll start feeling cold. I'll just lean over. I keep a lighter right there and I'll lean over and light it and uh, let it run for a half hour just and then turn it back off and wait till morning but it's uh that heater has been a gold mine uh little lanterns little charging station set up to charge your phones and stuff like that um you know just sweet simple easy setup nothing to it pretty pretty simple but man is it comfortable and it's uh you know like home away from home disco bed cots most comfortable cots ever made they're amazing um again 10 years almost going on using these cots they've been phenomenal you can stack them as bunk beds if you want to uh just incredible little setup and uh, that's really it. Our net, truck, trailer, dipping this up. Like I said, I just came back real quick to get that done. Now we got to go pick up John. We're going to relocate boats and uh, drop them in somewhere else for the evening hunt and uh, go get it done. So thanks for watching. We'll be back with more stuff soon. All right, it's Thursday, Thursday evening. And uh, set up here, relocated John to a new area. This one I'm in, I'm hunting does. All I got left is a doe tag. So, I mean, not that it wouldn't be a good buck spot as well, too. I've never been in here before. Found it on a map. Hiked in. Um, but uh, we're in a pretty 
good spot. I think I have a big CRP field right here. That's all grasses. It's probably 10 feet tall. 8 to 10 feet tall grass is super thick. And uh, I'm expecting bedding to be along the cedar edge of this thing up in here. All around that. But I'm expecting those does to want to go that way down there for food, water, and anything that's oaks down there. And uh, if there's any acorns left, they'll be down there and there's water down there. So I'm hoping they're going to head that way. Bucks are going to probably be cruising here. I got good scrapes everywhere, whereas I got a monster scrape uh, right uh, right there. Just like that. There's four or five of them along here. There's more up, all up and down this whole thing right here, all along this edge. Right in there, there's uh, there's scrapes all along there. So, like I said, I'm expecting I'm expecting those to come out here, come right through here out of this CRP as they cut this corner of this there to come cut right through here, or to come cut that corner and come right through here. That's my hope. Or they'll come out from up there, at those cedars right up there, and come right down through here. That's all my game plan. So, um, I don't know. We'll see. Hunting does here is very hard to do um because the does aren't behaving normal they can't if they behave normal bucks find them real easy so they got to be pretty if they're not ready to breed they got to be pretty creative and uh trying to avoid those bucks so hunting does alone um during the rut is is, is tough to do but i'm assuming since there are scrapes here bucks leave scrapes for does and they're going to leave scrapes in places that does frequent so when given all the bedding i have here which is a good sign for does. Um, I got a feeling I'm in a good spot for does. So the bucks say I am. So they wouldn't leave their card here and put the time into doing scrapes here if there weren't does here. So and those scrapes are fresh. Every one of those is fresh. Not leafed over. Good quality scrapes. So um, we're going to give it a shot. See what happens. John's hunting down here too. But he's actually in a perfect buck spot. He's in a good cruising buck spot. He's about 400 yards away from me over there. And uh, so we shall see what happens. Look at that big dude. Look at that dude. Another big hog. Right behind this pine, 15 yards, walked out, stood right there, looked at me, or not at me, but looked this way, and then went right up through there. It did take me a minute to get my phone out and get to, you know, to do the little swipey thing and get the video camera on, but you saw him from right there and over, but he came out right here, right next to that little pine, right there, like 15 yards away from me. Now if we can just get a doe to do the same thing. You can still hear out there blowing. There she does it again. I just had a doe try to come up from right along down there. Caught my wind. And then ran right along through the field here. And stood out there behind that cedar. Right back there and blowing and blowing and blowing. And then she went right up through there. Still blowing as she was going. I don't know how she got my scent. It should be going down the hill behind me. But apparently she did because she was looking over here and stomping her foot and blowing. But I think she must have been. Must have been back there. And my wind must have just kind of this field probably kicked it down there. But she busted me. And that's what I'm on to. That's what I'm after is does. Got about 15 minutes left of shooting light. Look at that moon up there. Ok, 
day it's Friday evening we got one more full day tomorrow here and uh, hunted this morning saw a nice little buck I just showed you on video um, pass by me and uh, just basically chauffeuring John around here trying to get him into deer and uh, he's seeing deer but nothing close enough so I hunted this morning until about 11.30. I got down, not going to lie, went back to camp, took a nap for two hours. Again, I'm only hunting does. And uh, there's no sense in scouting a whole lot because I, I don't hunt scouted spots. I go and find them on a spot and hunt hot sign right there. So I, uh, um, he called it uh, or texted me at 1.30. I knew he was going to get down at 2 got him at two moved him to a new spot got him over there and set up by about 245 I knew where I wanted to come based on a map I found this today while I was in camp and I uh, got in here about 3 30 gets dark at 5 30 so it's only two hours to hunt. we got about an hour and 15 minutes left here actually and um, but I'm gonna hunt this again in the morning I basically picked it for the morning uh, but we got real thick bedding up here that goes for a long way wraps around you can see we got a creek down here down here in the bottom that loops and with that creek looping right there I'm expecting these does in the morning to be coming up from here to come up here to bed coming up here to come up here to bed or milling around in here as they're up here the tree i'm in there's no good trees here this these trees suck you know there are these little uh whatever these are there i mean just look at this tree i mean it's you know again very little i'm almost at the top and i am only two sticks high my third sticks laying on the ground i stretch those two sticks but i'm you know i'm probably only about 12 or 13 feet up and i'm pretty exposed here um but there's not really a lot of options here and if you get into some of those trees you can't shoot this way uh and you can't make it all the way to where i'm expecting some of this travel to be if they're up here milling around again i'm hunting just does um but there is some fantastic sign here there's a ton of rubs and scrapes all along here there's a massive rub it's pretty fresh and new right on that tree right there and uh, you can see it on there it's a good rub right there and uh, so like I said it's a pretty sweet area and this bench we're on uh, this little bench right here before this drop and then levels out a little bit and drops down to that creek should be a pretty good spot we'll see what happens but again i'm hunting it differently because i'm hunting does i mean i'm looking for doe travel i might see some bucks cruising this but i'm mainly looking for for doe activity and with that creek rolling around i think and then you got this gradual grade here steeper drop here gradual grade there and a bench right here and heavy cover right here i am thinking we are in a pretty good doe spot so we'll see Exactly like I said, if I 
was on Fox, I would have been over there. So I could have pinched him between that river and that hill right there. And I would have just killed that buck. Or he would have walked right by me perfectly. There's also a spike over there. He's right over there. He's coming up. But he saw that big buck turn around and go that way. Because that doe went in me and she ran around that way. So the buck backtracked that way. The spike went that way too. But if I, like I told you in the beginning, if I'd have set up right over there, I would have killed that buck walking through there 20 yards. And that doe. But I'm expecting the doe activity to be up here tomorrow. And even up here now, this is where I would think the does would be. I think that doe was moving there because that buck was just talking her and moving her through there. But I think that natural doe activity will be up here if I change my mind. And I don't like it right after like the first hour of first light in the morning. If I don't like it here, I'll jump over there. It'll take me 15 minutes to pull down, walk over, set up, and be back in the stand. And, uh, let's see, but gotta love it here. We got about an hour left of uh, daylight, and we've seen one doe, four turkeys, and uh, that buck, I didn't see how big he was. I didn't put binoculars on him. And that, uh, uh, that spike. So, we're off to a good start. Let's see how it continues. Now we got a little six point working right down there too, right along that same route. Man, I might have to tell John to come in here. I might have to abandon this spot and have John get in here in the morning. This seems like a pretty good little pinch right here for them. If you don't have good luck where you are tonight, pull your stand, pull that stand out of there. Um, that's, I don't remember, what did I see? A doe, that good buck, spike, it's a six point, that half rack, and then another doe down there. And I've only been out stand for like 40 minutes. This place is, I'm hearing more deer. But I sent a text to John, told him, come here. What I'm going to do is he's saddle hunting. Like I said, this tree I'm in sucks. That deer did see me. That buck saw me, but I'm standing broadside, you know, square on to him in a tree the size of my arm. And I'm 13 feet up, and I got nothing behind me but sky. And uh, so he saw me, but he'd have been dead before he saw me. And uh, But anyway, I'm going to put John in his saddle. I'm going to tell him somewhere right around that tree. 
anywhere that you can there where you can shoot down to that towards that river and up to here anything right around here where you can be i'll actually probably walk him in i'll set a pin on it but i'll probably walk him in in the morning set him up and then i'll go find somewhere to hunt like i said my priorities are very low i only got a doe tag my number one priority is getting him into some bucks and this spot's hot so i'm gonna try and get him in here john john is not acknowledged or read that text yet so he might not have service where he is so now I got a dilemma I don't know if he's having a good time over there or a bad time I don't know what's happening but now my dilemma is knowing this is so hot and wanting to save it for him if he's not doing good over there if I have a doe come through do I shoot her and then wreck this area or do I not shoot her in case he needs it but he's not responding, so I don't know if he's doing good there. He's going to plan on staying there in the morning, or if he's going to come here. I don't know. I'm thinking... I'm half tempted to just bail out of here and save this for him. Yank my stand now and sneak out of here quietly and just get save it for him. Half tempted to. Because even if he does kill a deer tonight... There's good possibility that I could then come back in here tomorrow and kill a doe, maybe. I don't know. I don't know what to do here. I don't know if I should just sit. I'll probably just sit for the last little bit of daylight here. And then bail out of here. But I'm probably not going to shoot nothing. Because like I said, I don't want to screw this up for him if he needs it. I'm thinking that's the plan. I lied. I'm going to bail right now quicker I'm out of here especially if we, got, if we still got that you know 40 minutes till dark if I can be out of here in five minutes less chance of me screwing anything up in here and keeping it 100 percent fresh for him I'm gonna bail out of here cut through the long way get out and get him back in here in the morning if he needs it all right we made it out clean we we're back at the trailhead trucks just a little ways up there and uh so it's not too bad but I hurried as quick as I can. We still got, like I said, I got, I got out of there clean. So hopefully John will get back to me. Hopefully he kills the deer tonight and it's irrelevant and we're not even hunting tomorrow. But if he doesn't, this spot's pretty good. And uh, he's looking for horns. He'll take anything right now, but that spot's, uh, that's second best spot I found so far this trip. First one being the one where I killed my deer at, but... I mean, you think about this on stand for 40 minutes and saw all that activity and uh, still an hour almost before daylight. I mean, that's that's good. So tomorrow morning and tomorrow midday and tomorrow night, that place is on fire. So if he needs to get in there, that spot is fresh and good for him. We'll just move him down where I showed you. So, all right, we are officially uh, cut short, but done for the day for the right reasons. Turn that radio off. Otherwise, YouTube's going to be like, can you use it copyrighted? Look how cool that is. Is there any more coming? No. And they're all, oh, there they go. Look at them all. I dropped, uh, like I said, I pulled out early for John to have this spot. And uh, I'm back at the car and cruising out and just seeing that. Like I said, beautiful, beautiful Kansas country. What's up there? Let's go down this road for a sec. Let's take a peek and see what we see here. We got a few of them on this side. Let's see what we got going on here. Kind of dark, so I'm not making any promises. You know, oh, there they go across the road. Any more? Yep, here they all come. Look at them all running still down there. They're running down that way. There's one right there still by the mailboxes. Yep, beautiful Kansas country here, that's for sure. All right, we're going to turn this off here. John did text me. He's not, I got to put my seatbelt on here in a second. But um, John did text me, and uh, he's not seeing um, anything over there yet. So I'm glad I pulled out of there. We are probably going to go ahead and get him into that spot in the morning and get him set up, and hopefully it pans out well. All right, I got to stop here. All right, like I said, I just pulled out and saw those ones, so I was racing to get over here and get the camera on them. But, uh, um, I'm going to put my seatbelt on, and uh, then I'm going to go over there, wait for John to get done, and then we are going to uh, hopefully get him into deer in this spot I was just in. So, all right, wish us luck. Oh, there's Tucker. 
getting it ready. We got him in here. He's picked this perfect oak right here that he's going to set up in. Uh, right next to that big old sage, which is right there that I pointed out to you guys yesterday. And uh, he's getting his saddle on, getting all the stuff together. He's only going to be about two sticks high right here. But it'll let him shoot this whole area. So I'm going to sneak out of here and let him get set up. And uh, I'll wait for his call in about an hour when he killed a 20-pointer. <laughs> Look at that rub I see on my way out of here. Look at the size of that tree and it is just trashed. Look at that. That thing's big enough that I could put a stand in that. Look at right here in our campground. Look at that. Just cruising right through. We're in a uh, public campground here is where we're at. And uh, deer just running all over. The reason I'm actually out right now is uh, it is Saturday. I just got John into his stand and got him all set up. And uh, once I did, um, I went, you know, it was almost daylight by the time I got him in there and set up and everything all good with him. And then I went to go to one spot that I thought I could get to, couldn't get in there. They actually got the road gated off, even though it's a road that should have went past some private and got into some public. Um, they had it gated off, so I couldn't even get through there. Went to go to another spot, and uh, that other spot, had I took picture of it, and it literally had like nine cars there. And I'm like, okay, that's not going to work. It's a Saturday during a rut here, so everybody's out. And then I went to go to one of my other spots, and there were two cars parked on the road right there, too. I thought, you know what? All right, it's already daylight like it is now. Um, you know, sun's peeking over the sky behind me. You can see it in the mirror there. It's like, I'm just going to go back to camp, get stuff done. And, uh, oh, look at there. Look at right there. Look at those two guys. Let's zoom in on them. Right there. D doing a, a yearling. Um, but I figured I'd go back to camp and make some videos and uh, uh, get some stuff packed up. We're leaving tomorrow at the latest. Hopefully John kills a deer today, so we shall see what happens. I don't know if you can even see me here. Um, but uh, we're going to browse around here for a second and just take a look and see if we can't find any more deer here uh, in camp. Well, it's still, you know, early you know morning time before I head back to camp and uh, I need daylight to do those videos anyway. So we'll see what we see here. I'm going to drive around for a minute, see if we can find any other deer rolling around in here. More of them right here. Look at them all over there. All over here. Just chilling. What's up, dude? Yeah, they're just hanging out. It's right here. There's one walking away right there. There's one right there. You almost wish you could just hunt right in the campground. If you come to Kansas and you can't find any deer in the woods, it's because they're all at this campground. Definitely a pretty crazy setup. What's up, little dude? Yeah, what's up, cutie pie? Look at this, just from where I'm sitting here, I'm by a bathroom, but look at right there. Okay, right next to this guy's camp. Look at right over here. Right there. One right there on the road. Like I said, just incredible. The amount of deer that are just roaming around in this place. Where'd those ones go? Are they still right there? Yeah, right there. Look at these guys, just cruising through camp. Gotta love Kansas. Where are you guys going? Where are you going to? Just not a care in the world. These deer are used to people here. Like I said, it's a campground. They can't be hunted here. It's like a sanctuary for them. And they just don't care, not even a little bit. Oh, he didn't like me being there. He's like, nope, there's two of them right there. I'm like, no, I want nothing to do with you. 
See if we can find a set of horns in here. Usually every morning when we go out, actually this morning when we left camp, uh, when we were getting ready, you know, got up and turned on the lantern and we're getting ready to roll, uh, went outside the tent to take a pee and there was a buck right there chasing a doe right behind camp. Ran past me at about 10 yards right behind my wall tent. Uh, so like I said, there's horns in here for sure. There's a little buck right there. Just a little dude. Doesn't have a care in the world, I'm here. Campground deer. All right, I just pulled into camp. Camp's right here. I just parked a car. And I'm hearing something down here walking. Down this hill. Let's see if we can't sneak over here and see if we see anything. Kansas Park Deer. He's right there, 30 yards from me. I don't care in the world because it's a park. What's going on, dude? I am 20 yards from him. Look at him. I mean, I am 20 yards. Don't get in the way of the Oh, there was another one right there. <laughs> and if we look, there's my camp. I just pulled in. Go figure. Camp deer. Gotta love it. Told you. I, I told you, I heard one this morning, like I said, and I got up and I was standing out here peeing and he ran right back here, right right behind me. And uh, yeah, gotta love Kansas. Such an amazing place. 